Hi guys, in this episode I plan to explain decision trees for classification problems. So what exactly is a decision tree? Let's say for example, we were to have some data here, including the study time of students, their previous test score, and whether they have passed or failed. How would we map study time and previous test score onto our, our target variable? For that we can use a decision tree. And here is an example. First we check do they have a study time larger than 100 minutes? If yes, they pass. That's the first and last student here. If not, we check, do they have a previous test score larger than 50%? If yes, they pass, and if no, they fail. So in this case, we have one student here that has a previous test score larger than 50%, and a study time less than 100 minutes, and so they pass. And we have two students here that have a study time less than 100 minutes, and a previous test score less than 50%, and so they both fail. So what are some properties of a decision tree? They are a supervised machine learning algorithm, that is they supervise or map input data onto output data. They're used for both classification and regression. The first decision in a decision tree is what's known as the root node. Any decisions after the root node that exist within the tree are what are known as internal nodes. Answers to the decisions such as yes, no, what known as branches, and the final outputs of a decision tree are what are known as the leaf nodes. So how do we build a decision tree? So let's take a look at two simple decision trees. First, do they have a previous test score larger than 50%? If yes, they pass, and if no, they fail. And for the second decision tree, do they have a study time larger than 60 minutes? If yes, they pass. And if no, they fail. In order to figure out which of these decision trees are better, we can look at what's called information gain. And that is calculated by the following formula. Information gain equals entropy before the split minus entropy after the split. But what exactly is entropy? So entropy is the average level of uncertainty of outcome of a random variable or process. A pile of sand has high entropy, for example, if I was to drop a pile of sand, can you predict where all the grains would go? That seems quite difficult. There's a high average level of uncertainty, and so a pile of sand would have high entropy. A solid brick, perhaps one that doesn't break when I drop it, has low entropy. It might be slightly easier to predict where that would go if I was to drop it. So the formula of entropy is given as follows, and let's break this down. So big X here represents a random variable or random process. So for example, dropping a pile of sand. Uh, Xi are the possible outcomes. And Pxi is a probability of possible outcome Xi. A case where we have all data points belonging to the same class, this has an entropy of zero. Now why is that? If for example, I was to mix these points around, perhaps swap a few, rotate it around, the outcome would always be the same four data points all belonging to the same class and the order wouldn't really matter. And so here the outcome is certain and the entropy is zero. A case where we have an exact even split of classes and th in this case here, we only have two classes here but this could be for three or more. If I was to for example swap a few and rotate some around this is actually the most difficult case to predict where these points would end up since we have a lot of different combinations. And so this has an entropy of one. So let's now go through an example of calculating entropy. So here we have our student data here. So we can look at the entropy before the split. So in this case, we have five students, three people that pass and two people that fail. And so our big X, which is the random variable or random process, is a student passing or failing a test. Xi here are the possible outcomes, which in this case is either pass or fail. And Pxi is the probability of passing or failing. So we can apply this formula to our data. So first we have the probability of passing here, which is 0 0.6 or 3 over 5. And that's in the first part of the summation. And the second part of the summation is the probability of failing, which is 0.4. So the entropy of our data before performing any splits is 0.97, rounded to two decimal places. 
So let's now calculate the entropy after the split. So we know that the entropy before the split is 0 0.97. After we apply this decision tree to the data, we have two people that have a previous test score larger than 50%, and they are, and they are placed in this leaf node here. And we have the remaining students in the other leaf node. So for this leaf node, we have an entropy of 0 0.92. And in this leaf node, we have all data points belonging to the same class, and this has an entropy of zero. So in order to calculate the entropy after the split, we can look at what's called weighted entropy. And for that, we look at the number of data points in the leaf node, divide that by the total number of data points, and then times it by the entropy of that leaf node. And we sum this for all leaf nodes. So for this case here, we have three divided by five times 0 0.92 plus two divided by five times zero, which gives us a weighted entropy of 0 0.55. So this split results in a large decrease in entropy. So similarly, we can look at the same process for our second decision tree. So here we apply the split if the student has a study time larger than 60 minutes. So before we had an entropy of 0 0.97, and after performing the split, we have entropies of one and 0 0.92. And so the weighted entropy is 0 0.95. So this split results in a small decrease in entropy. We only went from 0 0.97 to 0 0.95. So now that we have the entropy before the split and the entropy after the split for both decision trees, we can look at information gain. So for previous test score larger than 50%, we have entropy before the split minus the entropy after the split gives us an information gain of 0 0.42. And for the split on study time being larger than 60 minutes, we have an information gain of 0.02. So the better split is the one with the larger information gain, which in this case is, does the student have a previous test score larger than 50%? So let's now go through the decision tree algorithm. So first, we calculate the entropy of the target variable, which in our case was if a student passed or failed a test. And we calculated this entropy to be 0.97. Second, we split on the feature that results in the largest information gain, and this forms the root node. So for example here, that's if a student has a study time larger than 100 minutes. Third, we continue forming splits based on largest information gain until all leaf nodes have an entropy of zero, or the algorithm's parameters are satisfied. So what I mean by algorithm parameters, I hope to cover in the next episode or I hope to implement a decision tree classifier in Python. So looking at this decision tree here, we see that the entropy of all the leaf nodes are zero, since for in each leaf node, every data point belongs to the same class. So let's now go through some advantages and disadvantages of decision tree classifiers. Some advantages include decision trees are easy to interpret and they provide a clear visualization of the algorithm. So often after applying a decision tree to your data, you can look at exactly what decisions were made to classify data. Some disadvantages include single decision trees are prone to overfitting, especially on very complex data. They are affected by noise. They are also largely affected by changes in data. So for example, if I was to change a few data points, that could have a large effect on the decision tree being built. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.